Hey everyone, this is Grindit. So in this video series we are looking at D2 modding and in the first video, which is uh, the getting started video, we installed all the tools we needed. So if you've missed that one, please go back and watch it so that you have all the tools needed in this video because I won't be covering their installation here. I'll be just diving right into the first topic, which is editing a skill. So let's get started. So now we'll begin with the Firebolt Manacos, which we started uh, messing around with uh, in the first video. So find Firebolt, go ahead and go all the way to the Manacos uh, columns. Here they are. Now last video we set it to 99 and then in the game it was 49. And that might have been a little bit confusing, but Ultimately, we were happy that our changes were being reflected in the game, so that's all that mattered. But how about we dive into that now and understand why that is. Firebolt has a mana shift. This is the mana shift column. It has a mana shift of 7. Now, when the mana shift is 8, then the value here for mana cost... Uh, is used exactly as you type it in. So in this case, 99. With a hit shift of 8, the cost will be 99. And we can test that right now. Good day. Oops, I need to save first. Uh, this is a good, good opportunity to explain that um, after you click the button at here at the top to save, which I forgot to do, uh, to see the changes in the game, you have to go back to the character screen and reload the character and then the changes are reflected. You don't actually need to close the game. You can just do save and exit and then pick your character up again and it refreshes everything. Good day. Okay, so now that I've actually saved, you can see that the mana cost is 100. Now that's just because my skill is at level one. The skill when it's at level zero is 99. And we can actually, I can show you that just to, just to show. There. Oh. Good day. I'm the stuff. There we go. So at level zero, the firebolt mana cost is 99. So this column represents the mana cost at level zero. And because I have a, a mana shift of eight, it's exactly this number. So what is mana shift? Well, mana shift allows us to do decimal points. Diablo 2 doesn't handle decimals. So for example, if I wanted the mana cost at level 0 to be 0 0.5, this is not going to work. Diablo 2 cannot handle this. But we can still achieve it. So if I use a whole number, in this case number 1 is the smallest that I can go, and then I change the mana shift to 7, then I should see, let me save up here. Okay, now before I go into the game, um, and show you that the mana cost is at 0 0.5. Uh, I guess I have to adjust something else, which is this column here. This is the min mana column, and it just allows you to set a minimum mana for the cost. So some skills don't have this, and some skills have this. Anyway, it's not that important, but for this, for our purposes right now, just because I want to show you a decimal, I need to change this to zero so that the mana cost, there's no minimum. And so now, if I click save at the top, and I go in the game, save and exit, reload the character, the mana cost is now 0 0.5. So this is because of the 7 hit shift. Now if you go to um, hit shift, and you want to understand like what, what a hit shift means, because right now, as I've explained, a hit shift of 8 is 100%. 7 is 50%, 6 is 25%, so it allows you to basically do decimals. And on a website like D2 Mods, uh, here it is. So on a website like D2 Mods, you have this file guide list. I'll have this linked in the description. This is like everything explained for you. 
and you can see uh, right now we're working with skills.txt so you should open this one and then if you search for mana shift you can see that mana shift this field controls the precision of the mana cost and the mana cost is handled in 256 this is again because there's no decimal so if you look at this table here at 8 it's 256 divided by 256 so it's, it's 100 or 1 right 100 percent 7 it's 128 divided by 256 that's half and then so on 6 is 64 of 256 which is a 25 percent and then it's 12 percent and then it's 6.25 percent etc so you can control um, the mana cost more um, precisely with this so don't don't hesitate to use the d2 mods form uh, it's I think it's a valuable resource so now that we understand this let's do some changes to firebolt so how about the starting mana cost we want it to be one and we want the mat so let's write it down so we're clear uh, actually for start I should say level one cost is one because at level zero it doesn't really matter and then cost per level we want it to be at 0 0.5 this is what we're trying to achieve for firebolt but we've got a problem if we use a hit shift of seven or sorry a mana shift of seven and which means 50 percent right then if i put in this column level mana a one that means that every level the mana cost is going to go up by 0.5 and that's exactly what we want we want the cost per level to be 0.5 but this applies to both these values. The mana shift applies to the mana cost at level zero column and the mana per level column. So what does that mean? That means right now at level uh, zero, the skill is 0 0.5 and then it goes up by 0 0.5 per level. So that's this, this part is working. This part is not working. So what should we do? Well, we should increase it. If I double it, then mana shift 7 means 50% of that, which is of the 1. But that's not quite right yet. So if I go into the game, you can see that the mana cost is 1.5 at level 1. And that's because the mana cost from this row here Good day. Is for level zero. So you can see now it's working. At level zero, it's mana cost one. But then when I put one point into it, oops. When I put one Good point day. into it, it goes at 1.5 at level one, which is not what we want. So actually, we should start it at one. Then at level zero, it's going to be 0 0.5. At level 1, it's going to be 1, and then at level 2, it's going to be 1.5, which is perfect. Because again, we're trying to achieve level 1 cost to be 1, perfect, and then level 2, level 3, etc. goes up by 0 0.5. So this is what we want to achieve. And so the way to do that is by having both at 1 and 1 with a mana shift of 7. So let's try it, see if we got this to work. Refresh the character. So Firebolt is now level 1. It has a mana cost of 1. And now I'm going to level it to 2. And it's at 1.5. So it's working. So now you know how to adjust the mana cost of skills. Okay, so before we modify something else, it would be really convenient if we had a higher level character to play with so that I don't have to manually go out and kill all the monsters and level it up. Uh, one quick way to do that is to go to your shortcut which we uh, set up in the first video 
and you can add at the end of it act for example I'll put four and then when I open my game I create a new character and she is in act four and she starts with a higher level if you set act five you start I think at level 30 now you don't have anything um, useful like you have no waypoints or anything so the the act where you start really doesn't actually matter too much it's just a way to get quick levels so if you want just set it to act 4 or act 5 to get level 27 or 30 if you want a higher level than that okay. don't worry we can um, get a level 99 in a different way but I'm not gonna cover that in this video so for now if you, you can just use that if you want okay so now that we have a character let's do some damage so let's say you want to change a skill because you feel it's a little too weak uh, for example a lot of people like frozen orb here it is row number 66 and if you go all the way to the right not all the way but pretty much till the end yeah there you go you have the damage columns uh, hopefully my game's not in the way there we go so here are the elemental damage columns and they represent the damage of most skills most skills will go here frozen orb is right here so first is the element you can see that the element is called cold there's a number of them there's even some um, elements that are um, unused by the game or kind of special elements like a stun element for example but we'll cover that in another, another video so that's the E type elemental type and then here's the damage now E min and E max the min and the max are pretty self-explanatory it's your minimum damage and your maximum damage and the E min and the E max is basically the damage at level 1 or at level 0 the starting damage essentially so when you first get the skill it should be doing about 80 to 90 damage and then you have these columns in between and these ones are tiered so they are the damage per level but instead of like the mana cost one that I showed you earlier where it's mana per level these are damage per level split into different ranges and to know the range you can simply go to your browser go to the search for e min there it is e min level 1 to level 5 it's five categories of levels so let's see uh, the first one is for level 2 to 8 so if I go back to my sheet you can see that this value here the first one e min level 1 is for levels 2 to 8 and that goes as well for your max remember that these are the minimum damage and these are the maximum damage and this of course is level one and level one I'll just write that so you can see and according to the website uh, the second one is for 9 to 16 and of course to the counterpart maximum damage and so on and so um, once you get to the higher one level f so 4 is 23 to 28 so you can see it goes above the max one above the max of 20 and then there's even one more the fifth one is for uh, 28 and above so 28 plus and of course you have, here in the middle you have 17 to 22 
Okay, so now I've kind of laid it out in an easier way to explain it. So your min and your max at level one, and then here, this this number here will get increased by this one. So at level one it's 80, then level two it should be 100, and then 120, 140, etc. Until the skill is level nine, then instead of this 20 feeding into this 80, it now becomes the 24 that feeds into it. And it gets bigger and bigger that way. And so if you're looking at these numbers, you might notice a pattern here that the skill gets more and more damage per level as the levels go on. So this is one way to kind of increase the damage in a, not in an exponential level, but in a way that scales it more and more and more per level which is why those plus one skills are so valuable. So let's have a look at these uh, synergies. So this here is the column. And the reason I've stretched it out so big is because this one can accept formulas. Unlike these ones here, which are just um, flat numbers, you cannot add uh, other text there. But these ones you can uh, create a formula. And so first thing that we usually do is reference a skill. And that's done by typing skill, open bracket, open uh, single quote, and then you reference the name of the skill. Now it's really important, before I do that, let me show you. It's really important that you name the skill with the file name. So that means these ones here. Yeah, let me show you like this. These are the names of the skills in the file. And these are the ones you have to reference. They are not always the same as in-game. So uh, just to show you an example, the poison creeper is this one, Plague Poppy. That probably means that at some point the developers thought, oh, let's call this Plague Poppy. And so they wrote Plague Poppy here. And then later they decided to change the name. And so they changed it in the string tables. But in the game files, it's still like this. So you have to refer to this one, for example. Um, there's many examples of that, but for our purposes, let's go back. Frozen Orb. And Frozen Orb references Ice Bolt. And then there's B dot B level. Uh, B level stands for base level. This is why um, in the game, you you need to put hard points into the synergies. So for example, if I wanted Frozen Orb to get more damage, I have to spec points into Ice Bolt. If I just get a plus one to all skills, it'll increase my Frozen Orb plus one, but it will not increase my synergy plus one. The Ice Bolt uh, level doesn't impact the damage because synergies are base level. So base, or as you probably call it in the game, is like a hard point, but in the files it's called base level. If you wanted just the total level or like the, uh, you know, if you're calling it hard points, these would be equivalent to your soft points. Uh, the total level is literally just uh, LVL. So here you would put LVL if you wanted to reference the level, the total level of Ice Bolt. But because this is a synergy, we want to reference only the base level. So we put dot B LVL, close the brackets. So this tells the code that the part that I've highlighted here uh, will come back as a number. So if my ice bolt is level two, then this will come back as two. So now I'm going to multiply by part eight, which is my... Um, which is my parameter right here. Let me enable frozen up here. Like this and like this, there we go. So this is the column for parameter eight and here I have my 2% synergy. So it's essentially saying par eight will transform into whatever is here. In this case, a two. So if I can rewrite it for you, so it's simpler. If my ice bolt is level three, then this first part comes back as level three. And then this is parameter eight. And we go over there and we set it to two. So that means it comes back as 
two. So now you can see that these two are the same. All right, this is how you write your formula, and this is what actually would happen if your ice bolt was three and your synergy was two. And then the sum of that will go into um, will get added into these because uh, the synergy multiplies your damage. So all of these are affected. Okay, so pretty simple formula here. So my ice bolt base level times my synergy amount. So what would we do if we wanted to add a new synergy? Well, the first thing we should do is do plus and then reference another skill. Uh, in this case, maybe we'll want to make it blizzard. Uh, dot B level. And so now we're saying it's not just one synergy, it's two. Ice bolt plus blizzard. This is literally adding them. So again, if my ice bolt is level three and my blizzard was 20, then the total would be 23 levels of synergy times the synergy multiplier. This is effectively what we're doing here. Okay, now there is a problem with this one. And that is the order of operations. So if you remember your high school math, the multiplication happens first. So this would actually be happening. And then um, the, this plus would be happening afterwards. So that's not good. Um, what we want to do is set up a bracket for the addition. So now the addition is happening in this bracket set and then whatever the result will get multiplied by par 8 so this is if you wanted the game to have a 2% synergy for both ice bolt and blizzard this is what this formula is effectively does now what if we wanted to do 2% synergy for ice bolt and 10% synergy for blizzard so that they have different amounts well you could do that as well and the way we would do that is by adding another parameter so let's go back to the original which is ice bolt times par 8 so this is uh, ice bolt at 2% now I'm going to put that in its own bracket just to, um, the order of operation here would actually still make it work, but just for visual clarity. Well, I've already copied it here for myself. Just for visual clarity, I'm putting it in its own bracket set so that you can see that this is happening on its own, and then this here will be happening on its own. And let's do par seven. Okay, so now, uh, par 8 for Ice Bolt and par 7 for Blizzard. So let's go back to the left. This is our par 7 column. You can see it's not being used right now. And we said, uh, I think it was a 10%. And now I'm just going to label it so that in the future I can quickly change it. So you can these are these uh, fields here with uh, an asterisk in the front. So you see asterisk parameter seven description. These are just comment fields. That means you can just type anything you want here. They don't. They're not actually read by the game. So it's it's kind of like notes for yourself. This is really practical because now anytime I need to buff the skill, I can come here and just change these two numbers without having to mess with my formula. And what's even better too is. Um, we're not going to dive into this in this video, but the tooltip, when you mouse over a skill in the game, that's actually handled somewhere else. And it too can reference these values here. So when you're changing these numbers here, you're changing it everywhere in the game, which is really convenient. So that's why it's good practice to try and use the, the pars. Some skills will have their par uh, all used up, and I'll show you cool tricks to avoid that in another video, but that's beyond the scope of this one. 
Okay, so now we should save and go in the game and test it out. So let me boot up my game. There we go. So let's see if we did a good job. Now, um, we're not going to see the Blizzard synergy here. You can see that Blizzard doesn't appear. This is because this tooltip, this mouse over, is handled elsewhere, and that's going to be covered in another video. But we can still test it to see if the damage increases. So, for example, I'll put my frozen arm on my right click so that it's here. And then a, every point that I put into Blizzard should uh, increase it by 10%. And so you can see that the 10% synergy is working. And of course, Ice Bolt is still working as well. Each point in Ice Bolt, Ice Bolt right now is increasing it by about 1. But my points into Blizzard are increasing by like, say, 5. So you know that this one is a bigger synergy. So it's definitely working. Um, and we'll cover how to uh, change the tooltip so that it would say at the bottom Blizzard uh, alongside uh, Ice Bolt. But anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, let me know and uh, I'll keep doing more. Thanks for watching.